Bishop so Bartimaeus didn't know how he was going to react. Some of us want a miracle. Rudy, we want a miracle. But we want to say already when I go to church and the spirit falls, this is how. No, you don't know how you're going to react. If there's an emergency, ah, if you need a breakthrough, Sharina, it's an emergency. Breakthrough is an emergency. Do I need an emergency? If somebody needs God to show up urgently, you don't know how it's going to work out, Pastor Percy. I'm looking for seven people who says, God, just do it anyhow. He wasn't, he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried. He wasn't worried. It, 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 didn't, it didn't mean anything to him. So see, you don't know how you're going to act in the midnight call. When that phone rings, you're hoping, you're trying to hold it together when that phone rings. Because you, because you don't know what might be on the other side of the line. Especially if the call comes in late at night. Um, it worries you, Eugenia. It worries you. Listen to me. Uh, listen to me. Uh, I believe there's a midnight crisis. Uh, but there's also a midnight call coming. Uh, I believe there's a breakthrough call coming. Uh, you don't know how you're going to react. Uh, oh, 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 I wish I can preach to someone uh, who's in a crisis. Uh, I wish I can preach to someone uh, who needs Jesus now. Uh, I, I'm just looking for seven people to preach to uh, who's so ready for God uh, to do something now listen to me listen to me listen to me this is what I found out in moments of desperation when you have nowhere else to run prophetess our reactions can run anywhere from panic to passive disbelief I'm worried about people who's holding it together. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I look at people many times in the house of God and I can see how they're trying to constrain themselves. No, 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 we're constrained by the gospel. We're not constrained by our own self-control. How can you have self-control if you're under the unction of Holy Spirit? He's in control. You're not in control. Ah, but you must understand. But if God has been our source of refuge, for even our minor scrapes of life. If he's been our first resort during our tiniest of tremors or discomfort, then the big blows will only drive us to where we've been all along, back on our knees, back to God. But here's the problem. God is not our source when we have little problems. I've made God my source for everything, not just the big things. And this is why when people have big needs, they can't run to God. Because they don't run to God with the small needs. But the mayor took everything to God. He, he heard what Jesus was doing. And he knew if he could do that for them, surely he can do this for me. He's calling you. What do you want me to do for you? <laughs> Jesus said, because watch, 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 watch. If you're sincere then people will come into agreement with your need without knowing what you need. But how many times when you really have a need, no one seems to be in agreement with you? At first, they quiet him down. But because of the sincerity of his need, you'll notice Jesus stood still. And, and then Jesus said, bring him. Then they went to him. They said, he's calling you. Oh, how about somebody telling you he's calling you? That means somebody else knows that you need a miracle. That means somebody else is in agreement that you need a miracle. Sometimes we're in church, but we're all by ourselves. Because no one knows. Because we're not genuine enough so that we can affect what we are going through on others. He's calling you. The cry has reached the ear of the Lord. No longer did anyone want to hinder him. Jesus knew what the man wanted and was ready to grant it to him. Listen to me. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He wanted to hear not only the general petition for mercy, but he wanted to hear that distinct need of the man. I believe this morning, this week in my sabbatical, God's been very clear with me about being articulate about our needs. Some of us, we think we need money. But what some of us need is self-control and better management with money. Some of us think we need healing. Ah, no, no, no. Some of you need to take better care of yourself. 
Because even if the Lord heals you tomorrow, something else will show up. Can I preach right now? Uh, we, 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 we need to be more distinct. Jesus said to him, listen, uh, everybody over here wants a miracle. What do you want me to do for you? What did he say, Pastor Chris? Rabbi, Rabboni, Rabbi, let me have my sight. In other words, he didn't say, let me see. Somebody else with the blind would have said, let me see. But he said, let me have my sight back. In other words, allow me to see you so that I can follow you. That was the need. Simultaneously, he got his eyesight back so he could see but also he got his spiritual sight because now the Bible says he followed Jesus. Oh, you're not hearing me. Some of us, uh, this is why when we get our little miracle, Pastor Benjamin, we get one thing, but we do not get the fullness. Jesus then says to him these words. He says, your faith has made you whole. Ah, it did not just heal his eyesight, but it made him whole. God is looking for somebody this morning who's crying out for wholeness. Somebody who's crying out uh, for more than a material need, for more than just a breakthrough. He wants to give you what you will need. Uh, to progress. He wants to give you what you will need.